Just a quick announcement, I have a new fitness channel up and running. It's called 10 Minute Workouts. Click the link down below. The first two episodes are up and running. So please check them out if you are interested in learning more about fitness only. Check out that channel, okay? The link is down below. Now let's get started. Welcome to another video. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you what's in my swim bag because uh, probably some of you are wondering what do you bring to the pool on a daily basis Justin. I'll give you some uh, perspective on why I bring these items and why they are essential because I only bring the stuff that I use. What's in this bag is what I use on a daily basis and if you are thinking of what to bring to your sessions uh, consider these items and the links will be displayed down below for you to pick up your own items if you're interested in purchasing these things as well so let's get into it now this is my swim bag <laughs> you were probably expecting some fancy schmancy very colorful swim bag but no this is just a regular supermarket shopping bag that i bring to the pool now why do i bring this kind of bag to the pool well the main reason is because i can't be bothered with buying a swim bag and taking care of it and washing it and cleaning it and all that. Plus, this deters thieves from stealing from me when I go to the pool. Because when I go to my swim sessions, I don't use the lockers. Most of these community centers or these pools that I go to, they require you to pay to use their lockers. So you pay 50 cents every time you use these lockers and I think that's just a total ripoff. You want to save money because you know if you're going to do this long term. I bring all my stuff to the pool deck. That's right. I bring this and my backpack or whatever I bring. My wallet, my keys, everything. I bring them to the pool deck and to deter thieves from stealing from me I pack all my stuff in something as simple as this so people would not think twice looking at this or trying to steal from me because I mean it's just a regular supermarket shopping bag. If I had a fancy Nike swim bag then of course yeah some people who are into swimming would probably want to steal from me so think of it that way. So far I've, I haven't had anything stolen from me when I put all my items out on deck and I make sure that they are off the radar is what I would say. Let's dive into this bag itself okay so first items that I just pulled out are these okay these are just flip-flop sandals these are sandals that I picked up in Thailand in a supermarket over there and these cost like two dollars for me and these have stood the test of time I've, I've worn these for over two years the funny thing is most people forget to bring their own sandals when they go visit a pool sandals are so important for your feet why because pool floors pool decks shower rooms change rooms they're all filthy they collect so much crap on the floor throughout the day. If you don't believe me, bring a magnifying glass to your next session and just examine the floor that you're walking on, okay? It's just full of just crap. You don't want to cross-contaminate when you, when you walk on that change room floor into the pool water. You know, you're just, you're, you're asking for trouble. So the first thing that I do when I go to a pool change room is I take off my shoes and I put these guys on. Okay, because I don't want to step on the floor. I don't want to cross contaminate what I put on my feet into the pool water. I shower with these on, go to the pool deck with these on. I take them off before I enter the water. And then when I get out of the water, I put these on, go to the change room, back and forth. So do you see what I'm getting at? There is no point whatsoever during my pool session where my feet have contact with the floor. And that has kept my feet clean and yeah germ free pick up a good pair of flip-flops and make sure you have the habit of wearing these every time you go to the pool every time you go back and forth from the change room to the pool deck you wear these okay this should be a habit burnt into your head next item i just pulled out towel now you're probably wondering why do you have such a small towel and why not carry like a giant beach towel beach towels take up too much space in my swim bag and look at this that's it this is all I need to dry myself off you don't need anything bigger than this in my opinion when it comes to swimming on a daily basis if you're using a beach towel it's going to take up so much space 
in your washing machine, drying it. Just the, the, the fact that you're dragging that giant piece of cloth around in your bag is just pointless, okay? Minimalize it. All you need is just a tiny little hand towel like this. Consider downsizing your towels every time you swim. Next item I just pulled out. Jammers. These are my jammers, as you can see. So you're probably wondering what brand this is. These are Speedo. Um, there are two major swimwear brands out there that you'll come across. And I'm not talking about Nike, I'm not talking about Adidas. I'm talking about Speedo and TYR. In my opinion, Speedo makes better swimwear, but again, this is subjective to everyone. Try them both out. TYR or Speedo is what I recommend. Don't get Nike, don't get Adidas, don't get Reebok swimwear. They don't specialize in swimwear, okay? Speedo does. TYR does. And you're probably wondering, what style of swimwear is this? Well, these are called jammers. Jammers are kind of like MMA shorts. They're like compression shorts. And you're probably wondering, why don't you wear the traditional Speedo type of swimsuit for guys, Justin? Well, I tried wearing them in the past, and to be honest, they feel very awkward on me. As a guy, I feel like I am walking around the pool like a male stripper. Some guys, when they're really skinny, they can pull off that look. And yes, it does make you swim a lot easier, I would say. For me, I prefer just jammers, okay? Jammers, they feel good on me. They're good enough. And if you don't like revealing your body to the public, yeah, just go for speedos or go for jammers. <laughs> and whatever you do, whatever you do, do not Ring your jammers or your swimwear like this, okay? I've seen some guys do this Indian burn. Never do that. Take care of these guys. What you do is you rinse them in cold water and then afterwards you just squeeze like this. Squeeze all that excessive water out and then you just hang it to dry. So you, I never put this in the washing machine. I never put this in the dryer. I don't wash it with the rest of my clothes and I don't Indian burn the water out, okay? I don't take the water out like that, okay? Because this is very delicate fabric and you don't want this fabric to stretch. You want this basically to be consistent, okay? So cold water, maybe a little bit of soap if you have to, to get rid of that chlorine and I just wring it out like this and then dry. Next item I'm pulling out, probably seen this already, it's the swim cap and the goggles. And why are the goggles inside the swim cap? Well. Like I said before, what I do is I usually pre-coat my goggles with baby shampoo. Okay, so the baby shampoo is used to defog the goggles. So I put a little layer of baby shampoo into the goggles on the outside and the in, and then I put the goggles inside my swim cap. Use cold water to rinse off that film of baby shampoo. And then boom, you're gonna have crystal clear defogged goggles every time you swim. This is a called a latex swim cap. This is basically dishwasher gloves, okay, for your head. Now, the opposite of that is silicone. Silicone is a lot thicker, more durable, and you can stretch the hell out of it. Now, the difference is, for guys, I, I recommend getting latex, okay, because you don't want to stretch it, and you want something that's snug. But for girls with long hair especially, you know, you have that bulb when you, when you tie up your hair, you need something that's a little bit thicker and durable that won't break. And that's why I recommend silicone. And this is silicone right here, okay? Silicone and I have my second pair of goggles, which are pre-coated in baby shampoo inside. I always pack two pairs of goggles and two swim caps, one latex and one silicone, just in case, okay? If I want to switch things up, I feel bored, I don't know, whatever, okay? Just in case, two swim caps, two goggles in my bag. Next item are hand paddles, okay? I always bring my own pair of hand paddles to every pool session. Every time I swim, I always make sure that I give my upper body a good workout, okay? And the only way I can do that is by using hand paddles. These are really good for getting a feel of the water, carving the water, pulling the water, okay? This will make you fly. But if you swim with these on all the time, you're just cheating yourself, okay? So you all, I only use these to warm up my upper body. Make sure that you take them off during your main session because it should be your, your own arms that should be pulling, your own feet that should be kicking. Next 
in my bag. Okay, these guys, a waterproof MP3 player. Okay, so when you're doing laps at the pool, continuously for hours, it's gonna be boring. I kid you not. So, to alleviate the boredom, it's good to get some music or podcasts into your waterproof MP3 player. And this is waterproof. I've run with this guy, I've swam with this guy, I've driven with this guy, okay? So this is an all-around MP3 player that's portable. And what happens is you just break it off like that, and there, there's your USB or MP3 player, okay? So you load up your, your favorite songs or, iP or podcasts into this USB stick, as you see, and then you just slip it in there and you just fold it back in here, like so. You just wrap it around back of your neck. Good to go, all right? So it's waterproof. Uh, the bass kind of sucks. It's basically, uh, it's, it's very trebly. It's a lot of mid-tones, but the sound will, will pierce through the water, okay? So if you're used to blah, 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 all that low frequency water, sloshing around, this sound will pierce through it. So that's in my bag as well. This thing, okay, you're probably wondering, what's in this, sunglasses? Nope. Instead, I have uh, a new action cam, okay? So this is the Sony AS300, okay? So recently I switched from using a GoPro, it was a Hero 5 session. It's a great action cam, but there's no image stabilization. And that camera is like three years old and the image quality isn't as good as this guy. This guy has image stabilization. Uh, it shoots in 1080, but no 4K. And I, I don't need 4K because 4K is overkill for my computer. And the image quality is just as good as the X3000. If you're wondering what an X3000 is, it's the best action camera out there. This, this thing has really good battery. It's got good stabilization. Looks great in the water, but you're going to have to put this in an auto underwater casing, okay? So, when you're vlogging outside, yeah, you can vlog like this, but when you're shooting underwater shots, you're going to have to put this in the underwater casing like this, okay? So you put it in here, put the casing on top, and boom, now you have an underwater action cam. What I've been doing is I've been holding my action cam with one hand, and I swim for you guys to demonstrate. And if I want a little bit farther shots, I use the selfie stick, as you see right here, and I just screw it at the bottom like this, okay? So when I'm shooting underwater, I'm usually like this for you guys. <laughs> if you really wanna review your footage, if you're serious about taking your swimming to the next level, you need to film your swimming. And the way most people do it is by using a smartphone. But smartphones, as you know, aren't waterproof, especially when you go really deep down into the water. So to really future-proof your, your, your gear, I recommend you picking up an action cam, a really good action cam. And the X3000 by Sony is good, but it's expensive and you don't need the 4K. So what I recommend as an alternative is getting its little brother, the AS300. It has all the, the same features as the X3000, minus the 4K, and it's much cheaper. So jump rope, okay? You're probably wondering, why do you have a jump rope in your bag? What's the best way to warm up before swimming? In my opinion, it's jumping rope, okay? Because you can do it anywhere, you can do it on the spot. And what I do is, if I'm at a condo pool or private pool, I jump rope first to warm up my body. If I'm at a community center that has a gym, I, I will work out in the gym first for like 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and then I will hit the pool. Okay, that's my way of warming up. But if I don't have a gym next to the pool together, then I just jump rope, okay? And look how compact it is. I would hit the water after, okay? So this is, jumping rope is so easy, you can do it everywhere. Yeah, it's the best way of warming up before swimming, in my opinion. Another optional item is a kickboard, okay? Now, if you are swimming at a community center pool, there will be kickboards available for you. But in my opinion, those kickboards suck because they're very thin, they're very cheap, and they're probably not gonna hold you up as well because those pools, 
they, they buy their equipment in bulk, okay? And they go for the cheapest stuff. I recommend getting your own kickboard, okay? And the way it goes is, the thicker and the heavier the kickboard, the more expensive it will be and the better investment for you. So if you're a heavy guy like me, you're gonna need a heavy kickboard in order to hold you up, okay? If you're a heavy guy and you're holding a very thin kickboard, most of the time, the kickboard's going to be underneath the water. It's not gonna hold you up as well. And you're, you, it's just gonna ruin your session. Like I said before, I use hand paddles to warm up my upper body and I use the kickboard to warm up my lower body. So a lot of you have been sending footage of you trying to do front crawl and your, your kicking is not warmed up yet. What I recommend you do is you warm up your upper body with hand paddles and then you warm up your lower body by doing front kicking drills. If you cannot do this drill for two laps minimum consistently at a 25 meter pool, you need to seriously consider putting in the work, okay? Pick up your own kickboard, Make sure it's heavy. You can test it out at the swim shop or make, just get the heaviest kickboard out there, all right? And then practice front kicking drills. Most people just overlook this drill every time they swim. I see it on a lot of footage. They're, they're, most people, they try to do front crawl. They send me their footage and their feet are just dragging the bottom of the pool. Why? Because they haven't trained their legs only specifically, okay? You need to target your legs. The best way of doing it, as most of us swimmers do, is by doing front kicking drills. Now, word of note, you will be going slow when you're doing front kicking drills. It's like moving like a tugboat. That's normal, okay? Because you've taken your arms out of the equation, okay? It's normal to go slow. So when you practice your front kicking drills, make sure you practice them in a slow lane or a shallow water, okay? Practice it, go slow. If you're moving forward consistently, it's working. Don't expect speed. Speed comes with the arms. Every time you pull with the arms, this is where your speed and power comes from, okay? Your legs are there for consistency to keep your lower body up onto the water surface and just to help you assist pick up a good kickboard, especially when you're on the road. If you're swimming in private pools or condo pools, you won't have access to kickboards out there, around there, okay? So make sure you, you pick up your own kickboard, okay? So this is mine. As, as, as you can see, it's a TYR. Like I said, Speedo and TYR, they are basically the Nike and Adidas of swim gear. And last but not least in my bag is this. Highly overlooked, I know. It's bottled water. So many people show up to the pool forgetting to bring their own water, okay? And they're just shooting themselves in the foot. Bring water, okay? You're, it's, swimming is a workout, okay? You're not there to have fun or to relax. You're there to work out. You need water. You need to stay hydrated. You cannot stay hydrated by drinking pool water, duh. When you drink your bottle of water, do it in the change room, okay? Why? Because when you're swimming, lots and lots of laps, what happens? You have pool water in contact with your mouth, okay? So what I do is I take this, I take a swig and I rinse out my mouth. I rinse out all that pool water and I spit it into the change room sink, okay? So no one can see. Don't do it on the pool deck that is gross, that is filthy, I've seen people do it. Don't do that, please, okay? Please, for the love of God, do not spit your stuff in the pool drains, okay? It's just nasty habit, okay? So, take a swig of filtered water, rinse your mouth, and spit out that pool water in the change room sink. And then, drink as much water as you like, okay? Use the bathroom, shower, whatever you have to do. So many people forget to bring bottled water and they just, their throat is dry, they're just they're dehydrated, they can't go further. It's so overlooked. Bring your own ball of water to every session when you swim. That is what I have in my swim bag. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Let us know what you have in your own swim bag. And if you wanna pick up all of these items that I've listed in this video, the links are down below so you can pick them up for yourself. If you need swimming lessons, check out 7dayswim.co, the best online course where thousands have signed up for swimming lessons. If you want to learn how to swim A to Z right now, get in Synax. Let's click the link down below. My name is Justin. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye!